Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel. This is the Lawn Care Life. We are live, at least for those of you watching live. Some of you might watch it on replay, which is fine as well. But I uh, wanted to welcome everybody. Give me the thumbs up. I always get nervous about audio quality. Somebody told me last week that uh, I was bragging about the internet connection at my house because I've been living somewhere else. And about this time, I said something about, hey, the, the Internet's better. Everything's working better. He said my screen froze up for just a second. So anyway, what I did today, I don't think you'll necessarily notice, but um, I changed the settings on my stream from 1080p to 720. OK, so slightly less high resolution, um, but probably going to work better is the plan. So already got some questions coming in. Appreciate that. Um, a couple things. If you're going to the GIE Expo, I want to give you the half off code because that's expired. The early bird discount, I think, runs through like September 9th or something like that. They give me an affiliate link. So if you go to checkout, use VIP LCF. That's my code. I don't know what LCF even means. VIP LCF, and you will get half off your ticket. So if you register early bird, is 20 bucks. You use my code, get for 10 bucks. Um, if you're after early bird, I don't know what the price goes to, but you can still use the code and, and get half off. So, uh, and then if you're, a lot, we talk a lot about weed control and stuff. There, there are a lot of resources at lawncarelife.com video course. I have a lot of people taking advantage of the weed control and fertilization academy. I've got these weed control and fertilization documents that have programs. It tells you the products I use. It, it, there's all kinds of documents in there. Um, things like that. So if you're interested, you can check those out. All right. Without further ado. Oh, and I'll say this. I had a, um, so Xmark had two reps that were going to be scheduled for tonight. And I had a late um, double, they were double booked. So I got a late afternoon notice that they were not going to make it tonight and they were rescheduling. So they were very apologetic about that. And we're going to try to get them on it later to talk about Xmark mowers, Xmark um, you know, they've got uh, also the Z spray, Z turf equipment. So your Z sprays and uh, X mark LTS or what used to be called that, but they branded all under Z turf equipment now. So those guys, we're going to try to have them back on. So, all right, that was the uh, opening monologue. We're going to get to the questions. I've got the hurricane coming through the south here, so uh, plenty of rain in my area, um, obviously. Uh, we're, I'm a I'm Birmingham, so we're just getting a lot of rain, but obviously a lot more serious situation for those down on the coast. Um, also, just thinking of what's going on in the lawns, you know, in our area, the the army worm epidemic has been has been crazy this year. Uh, we had lots and lots of army worms in our area, so you may have had those um, in your area as well. We've been spraying those like crazy. So, all right, so let's get to the questions. And we've got German, I guess as they say, it's spelled German, but separated. So um, he says he's from Atlanta, Georgia. How can I give her a centipede grass on Bermuda grass? All right. Um, I'm going to give you some, some ideas at least. This is not really easy to do. So here, here's what I do. Sometimes you'll have products that are labeled for Bermuda or Zoysia, but they're not really labeled for centipede. So, or products that I know will beat up a centipede yard. Like, for instance, solitaire, I'm pretty sure is labeled for centipede, but it beats it up pretty bad in the summertime. So, you spray with something like that, Revolver, uh, Tribute Total, those are products, you know, that are not really centipede, uh, doesn't really particularly like. Um, one other option is. And, they, and they see, I'm going to say it's not necessarily going to be easy. Probably the best option is not legal. I'm just going to put, it, put that out there. Is use MSMA, um, which is a product that's no longer legal in residential properties in multiple apps in the summer would probably kill it off because centipede doesn't like it. Bermuda tolerates it very well. Um, you might even wait till like February or something when, when it's stuff centipede start to turn a little bit green and, and spray it with glyphosate, like 32 ounces per acre is one option. I um, mean, you might, you know, not hurt your Bermuda if it's still dormant, but maybe the centipede's got some green in it and you could knock it out. So that's uh, some thoughts on that. Good question. 
Well, uh, let's see here. Do you, we need an edge first or do you mow and then we need an edge? Well, you know, if you're working by yourself um, and you're out there mowing, um, I'm probably going to mow first and then weed eat an edge because I like to get the mower as close as possible to the to the target. And then you, you have as minimal uh, weed eating as you would have to do at that point. Now, if you're going to edge and weed eat first, then you, you might end up spending more time weed eating than you would have to because you're probably actually mowing, weed eating further out than you would really have to. But if you know that if you go ahead and do the mower first, then you know exactly what is left to, to weed. So that's how I do it. Now, if you're working with a crew, you, you know, somebody grabs a weed eater, somebody grabs a mower, somebody grabs an edger, everybody's got their job and you're all doing it simultaneously. All right. Next question. Let me find my spot here. Bermuda dude. I like that Bermuda dude. Is that is that the name of your actual company, Bermuda Dude Lawn Care Company? What type of nitrogen works best for cooler temperatures for early spring green up? I'm assuming you're talking about Bermuda, since your name is Bermuda Dude and your logo says Bermuda Dude. Um, I tell you what, I, I, I this may not be the answer you're looking for, but what, typically the yards that turn green the fastest are the ones that start mowing the earliest. So if you'll if you'll get out there and cut your Bermuda lawn in March. And others say, well, it's not really growing. It's, it's just, you know, staying dormant. Yeah, it's not really growing. But if you'll cut it and, and get rid of a, that layer of dormant grass that's sitting there, what it does is allows the sunlight to get down to the roots, begins warming the soil, and begins um, turning your grass green. So that's, to me, the best tip to make it green early. As far as nitrogen goes, you know, the problem is it's going to be hit or miss depending on the weather. And so you may put out some nitrogen. Like, like we use, a, a, I buy my stuff from Harrell's, H-A-R-R-E-L-L-S, and they sell me my fertilizer. And I use a, a quick release blend in the summer. I mean, in the spring, it's, I think it's a 20-3-5 blend. And this people use a, a liquid, you know, nitrogen. But regardless of which one you use, if you put it out there and, and the temperatures are in the 50s, it's just not much going to happen, just to be honest with you, or even the 60s. You know, So you, you kind of need the weather to warm up, and the weather's going to have a lot more to do with the weather and the mowing. Uh, but that being said, you know, I use that 20-3S5, and, it, and you get you start getting those warm days in April. Um, it does make a difference, and it will green it up faster. But again, the mowing is, is great. Jeremy Murray says, High Lawn Care Life. Hello. Uh, Jason says, How to get rid of Lespedeza. Uh, Lespedeza in a, is supposedly the number one most successful weed in a centipede lawn. I'm not sure how they measured that or ranked that. Um, but we use uh, Change Up, is a great product for Lespedeza. I mean, you can use uh, Celsius, some of these other products, but I, I don't know, whatever it is, Change Up. Um, I think, I'm not sure, you know, which chemical it is doing it, but Lespedeza, as compared with Spurge, has a little bit woodier um, stem to it, and the change-up seems to, to work faster and better on that. Mickey said, uh, so if you got a lot of weeds, army worms got us bad. How much can it recover? And ideas of what to do going into fall. Mickey, if you can help me out here and tell me what kind of grass you have, what, where do you live, um, that would be helpful. I might be able to, to better help you. So if you don't mind, leave another comment and help me understand your situation a little better. I just order uh, duo side for armyworms. I'm not familiar with that product, but I don't think armyworms are the hardest thing in the world to kill. Um, there's probably a lot of insecticides that will kill them. What do you recommend for pre-emergent for centipede this fall and next spring? All right, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I mean, I, let's just go what I'm what I'm doing. I'll tell you what I used to do. So I used to put out um, prodiamine in the fall and also in in my round one, so like January, February time frame. And I would put out a, a heavier dose in the fall, like maybe I use this um, wettable powder. And it was like, be like 1.15 pounds. I'm sorry. Uh, I think that's right, 1.15 pounds per acre of prodiamine. Well, then I would come back in the 
spring and I, or January, February, when it's still dormant, and I use a very light dose, like 0.55 pounds per acre. Well, what I found is last year I, I changed up. I, I still use the 0.55 pounds per acre. And as some people, um, you know, don't don't want any pre-emergent on it in the early in the year. It can maybe hinder it from recovering if it got beat up from wintertime. Um, but, I mean, I'm trying to keep weeds out, so I, I still use it early in the yeah, I think you got to be more careful as it begins moving into spring transition. You're going to cause more damage and more setback. So, um, but I'm using it again when it's still dormant. But in the fall last year, I switched over and I started using Spectacle on my centipede and St. Augustine yards. And I was using like a very low rate, um, I say low rate, like four ounces per acre, where the Bermuda and Zoysias, I was using six and a half ounces per acre. And I tell you what, my centipedes look better this spring and less weeds. Not just poa; it's it's a lot of weeds, and it, it definitely helped them. I didn't see any uh, damage as far as the grass recovering, and even this summer, I thought my centipede yards looked better than I can remember in a long time. So that's what I'm doing. All right, what's the problem with the stairs that are coming out with the new design standard? You know, I've heard rumors of that. Uh, as well that there's that uh, but I haven't heard that confirmed so I can't uh, speak to that I've got a, a stairs star stairs I'm sure I'm not I'm not I'm sure how to pronounce it um, mine's a 60 inch I have not had problems with mine it may have been like some little button came off or something like that um, my you know mine's got it's still got less than 100 hours on it, you know, so it's not like I've run up a 1,000 hours. I think it's got 70-something hours on it. Um, but mine works great. I think it's got good power. I think it's got good speed. I think it's works going on heels. So, um, but but I, you're not the first person I've heard that, hey, they're they're redesigning it. But, again, I haven't heard that officially from anybody on XMART. I wish we had the XMART people on here because I, I think uh, we could just ask them point blank, and that's Hopefully we're going to have them on soon. We can just say, hey, um, is there going to be a new stand on mower design and what's going to be the improvements over that versus the other? Because the Stars was an improvement over the, the previous one. But, yeah, I've been happy with mine, so I, I'm not sure. Hey, Jason, in your professional experience, what's the best all-around warm season grass at crowding out preventing weeds? I would say zoysia, um, you know, it's particularly we got like emerald zoysia, the fine blade ones. It grows so thick. I'll be honest, it's hard to cut sometimes because it grows so thick. Um, the, oftentimes you you would need very little herbicide on it because uh, it's just, you know, it just doesn't get near as many weeds. So that would be my answer. Eric says, I've noticed clumps of a weed in my centipede lawn that grows faster than the centipede it's a brighter green with the seed heads it's hard to tell but is this poa will blindside help with this uh, most likely not poa it's it's way too hot for that i would think uh, it's hard to know without a without a picture and even the picture i may or might be able to get i'm i'm sorry but uh, but if it is poa or grassy weed blindside you know most likely not your your best option you know and if it, now if it's some kind of kalinga or something like that uh, blind side would be great for that we would definitely put a hurting on it but if it's a grassy weed you might want to go more with um, centipede i'm sorry with celsius or certainty or something like that It'd be better grassy word, uh, weed product appreciate the tip here five bucks um from cr said i've been invaded with another wave of army worms i don't have a sprayer what can i use the big box stores i've tried uh, i'm not sure how to pronounce that I, i'm trying not to say pronounce things that i don't really get at um let's see i again i think on these situations i'm sorry i, I think you're gonna have to read the the label you, you don't have a sprayer i mean Honestly, you know, what we're using is, is um, shoot, what's it called? I'm sorry. The, the active ingredient is bifenthrin. And so you could just go get a, a generic bifenthrin product and get it. You don't have to have a big tank sprayer like I got. I mean, you can just have a two-gallon sprayer if you want to and spray your yard with that. Um, so, and it's not an expensive product. Well, Talstar is the product we're using, Talstar Pro, uh, Pro. So you may can try to find Talstar or, or do a search for a generic bifenthrin product. 
and be able to use that. We use one ounce per thousand square feet. So if you see, you say, hey, my yard's 5,000 square feet. I need five ounces in my sprayer. And you spray the whole yard and cover it. And it will uh, most likely give you some results. So I'm not sure at the big box store. You could read the labels on their products and see if it says army worms on there. Um, but, you know, we can get the products that we're using the same as that product we're using to control. All right. I miss you. I love your channel. All right, I don't know about all that, but I cut grass today and was smoking near engine. It was 95. Maybe so we need to get a new battery cause acid. All right. I don't know anybody that misses me that bad, um, but I, I'm, I'm sorry. It was 95. Yeah. You might just need a, your lawnmower needs to cool off a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. All right. How far are you from Jasper and Walker County? Thanks. Hashtag your local hero. I'm not too far at all from Jasper, Walker County. Probably an hour, I would say. All right. That's my company, Bermuda Dude. So, Bermuda Dude, um, you don't, do you use, is this all Bermuda in your area or you just only work with Bermuda? I mean, you you don't you tell the Zoys just no, or uh, which is fine. I don't, I don't care. I was just curious. Austin says, what's a good herbicide or product for clearing brush and woody plants? I'm not having good luck with glyphosate. Seems like, all right, I might get this wrong. Can you guys help me out if you're watching? But um, is it triclopyr? Triclopyr? Triclopyr, I think is how you say it. I'm going to mispronounce some of these names. I'll just go ahead and tell you. But I, I think the, that's the chemical. So I'm trying to net, think of the, the actual... Uh, the actual name of the stuff I've got. I've got some stuff <laughs> and I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I think if you'll triclopyr, T R I C, tri, um, I'm gonna say L O P Y R, maybe do a search for that and see if that is, is the brush killing uh, product that people use. And I can't think for the life of me the name of that, the actual product I use, but it's it's a brush killing kind of thing. So if you're talking about, well, I mean, and some of that stuff's just hard, like uh, Chinese privet and all that. I mean, it's just hard. I got bamboo at my house, man. He taught something hard to kill. What brand weed eater do you like? I like Husqvarna. Uh, so that doesn't mean other you know, brands are not good. That's just what I like. My favorite one of all time is Husqvarna 326 LS. Right now I've got two. One's the 525 LS. I forget what the other one is, 323 or something like that. That 525 is pretty good. I just liked the 326. It was lighter. All right, just north of Atlanta, what time should I start putting out fall pre-emergent? Tell you, for me, and I don't know if you're a, home, a homeowner in business, I am going to start the day after Labor Day. So a week from tomorrow is my plan. And the reason I'm planning to start then is I got hundreds of yards to get to, um, you know, Ideally, you want to get it down and get it watered in before we get that first cool night that gets down, say, low 50s, upper 40s. You know, that, that first morning you walk outside and it feels like fall and you say, oh, I'm so happy it feels like fall out here because you're tired of summer. Um, that That's the night you, you should have had your pre-emergent out before then and watered in. OK, so for me. I can't get everybody done that perfect week before that happens. So I start, let's say, day after Labor Day. It may take me through late October to get it done. And I'm putting out spectacle with Simazine with 2,4-D. And if I'm late and the pole is already germinated, hopefully that spectacle and the, and the Simazine will still knock it out. The 2,4-D will help if any cool season weeds have already germinated or uh, maybe just some warm season weeds you're trying to put out of their misery, like spurge and things like that. Hope that helps. Good question, Kevin. Elvin says, how does the fungicide applications look like in your business? If you include in a product, customer's program, how do you price it? And when you apply, um, all right, how is it addressed with those not included? All right, great question. All right, I don't include it because, I mean, it's like maybe 1% of people get get like a big large patch or whatever in the, in the spring, you got that huge dead looking spot in your lawn. It looks horrible. But I think with that being said, um, you've got some customers that you can upsell to. They just want that done. Okay. And now if it's something like, um, you know, just 
just cosmetic type funguses you get in the summer. Like a, you, you get, what's it called? A dollar spot. You get dollar spot in the summertime. Like I don't just run out and try to sell them a fungicide for that. It's just, I, I just try to like tell them, you know, talk them off the cliff if I can. But if, if it's in the summer, um, if it's in the spring and you got the same yard, sometimes it'll be the same yard and they'll get it every year. So if, let's say it's a customer and they get this uh, new customer and they get this big fungus shows up in the, in the spring. And you might have a conversation with them and say, hey, listen, uh, is this something that happens regularly in this same area? Because what you might find out, I know I used to have a yard and it was the same area every spring big patch and nastiness and it just took it would finally recover but it took a long time so if that's the situation and you can kind of feel the customer and they want to have a treatment plan then what you want to do in my understanding again is you want to apply that in the fall because here's here's the way i understand it works a lot of times the, like i just got through talking about you're putting your pre-emerge down in the fall before those cool fall nights hit well that's the same time you want to put out your fungicide because that's when the fungus oftentimes starts now why don't you notice it until the following spring is because your grass is dormant it's brown so you got this big fungus that's nasty and active and attacking your grass and but you don't see it because your whole grass is, is your whole lawn's brown well the next spring everything starts greening up except what where that big fungus is and so at that point, you know, you can look at and see, does it have kind of a reddish, orangish tint around the outside? If so, it's probably still active. You might want to sell them on a fungicide. Um, if, it, if it doesn't, if it's all kind of brown around the edges and tan, it's probably already done its damage. Again, you may want to sell them one anyway because they, they want to feel better about themselves. But that time, I, I typically tell them, now, the damage is probably already done. Let's see if we can start working toward recovery and then say, hey, but our best chance of preventing this from happening next year is to put a fungicide out in the fall. And again, that, the fungicides are expensive. The granular ones are expensive. Um, definitely expensive. The liquid ones are not as expensive. So if you're out there spraying, you want to put liquid in the tank, go ahead. If it's um, the advantage of the granulars, you can just kind of keep that on your truck and use it when you need to. So anyway, hopefully that helps. All right, uh, love your channel, being able to see how well products work side by side on various weeds. My yard, appreciate it. Yeah, I've been, uh, I just, I'm about to do a video. I just sprayed Kalinga and Nutsedge with Solero and got pretty good results. So, all right. Um, Mickey has said Bermuda and Mississippi. All right, Mickey, I'm gonna scroll back up and. I know I asked you where you were, but I forget your original question. So Mickey said, so if you have lots of weeds and army worms got us bad, uh, how much can it recover? All right, you got Bermuda. Um, you got here with the army worms. Uh, I tell people you're in good company. Army worms went crazy this year. And, you know, it's just you just got hammered with them like everybody else. Um, it, your grass, it will recover. I'm not worried about it moving forward. The weed, you know, armors don't eat the weeds. The weeds, I would just, I don't know what kind of weeds you got, but a lot of them are probably going to die when we get cold weather soon. Your grass is not going to bounce back and be super green just because it's the time of the year. We're almost to September. So, you know, is it, it going to recover? It, yes. Is it going to probably be fine next spring? Yes. Um, but there's not enough time this year for it to look great because again the calendar is catching up with you so um, i would let the weeds die out i would i would if you want your yard looking better next year i'd try to put a pre-emergent out this fall i'd try to put another pre-emergent out next january or february and get ahead of all of those weeds any grassy weeds you can start hammering on those in the winter time with tribute total or celsius and certainty or even glyphosate once your yard goes dormant and try to clean that stuff up all right experiments Oh, okay, he, he said he loves uh, my yard, appreciates the experiments. Yeah, I'm always trying out products uh, on my yard. I do that for my own sake too sometimes because I like, I want to see it on video. Like, which one of these products actually works better on this particular week? Change up works fantastic against Lespedeza, Spurge, and Chamber. I love that stuff. Yes, yeah, somebody was asking earlier about Lespedeza. Uh, change up, I use it a lot. And yes, it costs maybe 200 and something dollars for a two and a half gallon jug, but. It goes a long way, and so it's really not an expensive product, and it's great. The best seed for centipede. I, 
I don't know. I don't know. I just think you, know, you go to my local seed store. I think you just buy centipedes. I, I didn't know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I just, but yeah, I was like this. You, you, you probably should have planted it a couple months ago. You're getting kind of late in the game to be planting your centipedes. It might germinate and be fine now, but I would have, would have maybe planted it in June. Um, Southeast Georgia for Elvin Woods. What did Elvin ask a while ago? Uh, oh, fungicide. So you, yeah, you may be dealing with some, some centipede and, you know, different, if you're kind of Southeast Georgia, anyway. Uh, how do you get stripes in the lawns? Well, a lot of that has to do with them, the cool season grasses. You know, it's hard in the South. Every once in a while you see a zoysia that has a little bit of stripes, but um, the guys with the cool season grasses, it, it, and they cut it tall and it lays it down. Sometimes you have a striping kit on your mower. Sometimes the mower just kind of does it on its own. So a lot more to do with the grass than anything particular that the people are doing. Though I think there's probably better stripers than others. Any studying tips for the Alabama OTPS exam? You know, when I took that, it seemed like there was a lot of questions on like pests and diseases and fungus and then kind of legal stuff and then understand the math. So get the study guide. Um, there is a guy at the Birmingham Botanical Gardens. Uh, uh, neighbors, I think Neighbors is his last name. His name slips my mind. I know I've got his business card on my desk, but I, um, see if I can last name to neighbors. But anyway, yeah, you could call the Birmingham Botanical Gardens and say, I think they do offer a class. This guy does, and it's uh, supposedly a great prep class, and I've heard good things about that. Um, but, you know, just study. You just got to pass it once, man. So just get it over with. Uh, if you need help getting started, Dustin, uh, once you get examined, I can probably connect you with my supplier if you want to do that. Get in touch with me. Um, you can email me, send me a message on Instagram, wherever, and uh, YouTube, and I can connect you with my guy who uh, who's great. So, all right. Uh, Mickey says, I have Bermuda on 50% Bermuda. Lots of weeds, army worms. Hit it two weeks ago. Got my grass. Can a pre emergent and fall shut hold off and overseed? I wouldn't. I would, yeah, Bermuda, it'll feel, and we kind of addressed this earlier, it'll spread fast next year. I would go ahead with the pre emerge. Uh, you got to get rid of some of those weeds so your Bermuda will have room to run. Next year, I think your Bermuda will fill in great if you can keep the weeds out and then fertilize it. Jose, what's a good edger for someone who only mows part-time 10 to 15 lawns per week? I mean, just uh, if you're a steel guy, just go get a steel. If you're a um, – anyway, I you know, whatever. Steel, I like Husqvarna handheld equipment. So, um, you know, I – just, I don't know, just any any of them would be fine. Have you heard of Jason Creel? I hear he's got some great resources for sale. My man's Paul show. Paul Jameson uh, is a friend of mine. He's got the Green Industry Podcast. And uh, Paul, and maybe I tell him, maybe I don't pronounce my last name right. It's Creel, C-R-E-E-L. But he drags it out like Creole, and he says it all anyway. So, yeah, he butchers my name bad, and I give him a hard time with it. Uh, any advice for controlling Bermuda grass invading St. Augustine? Ooh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be real tough. Um, no, I don't. I just, I just answered the question. I don't have any advice. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know where to start. Um, but, you know, I've got Bermuda and St. Augustine side by side. I'll say this. And some people said, Jason, that's a mistake. I, I've got – my grass is like almost all Bermuda. But I had some shadier areas, and I put some – St. Augustine pieces of sod out there and let it spread. And some people was like, oh, it's going to mix in there together. Well, the Bermuda doesn't really like the shady area, so I don't think the Bermuda is going to do too well over there. And the St. Augustine, if it starts to come over my Bermuda, I'll hammer it with something to keep it out. And I think just mowing it low will stress it out, and I think the Bermuda will take it over. So easier the other way around, keeping your uh, Bermuda out of St. Augustine. I'm sorry, St. Augustine and Bermuda, but the other way around is going to be a little tough. Just thought about applications for two-gallon sprayers. I would recommend getting a cheap kitchen scale and measure everything in grams. It's more accurate easier to measure, not wasting product. Yeah, that's uh, not a bad thought at all. They do come with, like, measuring cups. A lot of products do, but, yeah, you're right, probably more accurate. All right, Charles, bail me out here. Crossbow is exactly the product I was trying to think of earlier for brush killer. 
I've got crossbow, Char crossbow Charles that I couldn't think of to save my life. Um, and Triclopier, did I spell it right? I don't know, but I got pretty close. But that's that's what I would get, um, whoever's asking about killing brush. All right, Jason, what pre-emergent labels say you can apply so much per year? Is that a government FDA, EPA thing, or is that actually harmful Bermuda grass or soil? You know, I don't know who makes the rules on that, um, but, you you know, um, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to advise on here going over the, the legal limit in case it, you, you'd be breaking the law in doing so. So I, I'm sure it has been tested. Um, you know, if you use 0.1 pounds more pre-emergent than you should have, is it going to devastate your Bermuda? You know, probably not. But why would you? It, it, most of the time, the legal limit is going to be sufficient to accomplish the purpose. You know, so there's it's not like you necessarily need to use more in those situations. Uh, Daniel's fresh fall. I keep looking at your picture, Daniel, and it, to me, when I glance over that, it looks like a basset hound. But I, now I guess it's some kind of miniature horse. Uh, what brand of weed are you like? I, I answered that earlier. It's, uh, I like Husqvarna. Personally, I've got the Husqvarna 525 LS. I had the 326 LS. James is my buddy, and uh, James is the one I was telling somebody a while ago, uh, studying for their Alabama OTPS. James is my sales rep, and he's taught many of us uh, a lot about the weed control business. So that's um, who I would connect you with and will connect you, Dustin Fowler, if you want me to. And uh, I tell people all the time, the best thing I can do is connect you with James because he'll help you. Um, Kender, not sure. Not sure on that one. Uh, I have a question. How do you treat or get rid of Pep's ball? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, you're talking about Bahia grass. If it's just Bahia grass, um, you know, we just use Metzulfuron, and you can use it like a quarter ounce per acre, a third ounce per acre, and it will at least suppress it. I'll say that, make it quit putting up a, a seed hit it. When you said the Paps Pollum, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that right probably either, but I picture these other big grassy clumps of weeds that are hard to deal with. But I guess the one you're particularly talking about, if it's just Bahia grass, Metzulfuron is great and very cheap. What mix are you running in your large tank going into September? I am running Spectacle Flow, Simazine, and 2,4-D. That is uh, on my Bermuda Zoysias. And on the Centipedes, I'll use a lesser rate of Spectacle Flow. And uh, on the Centipedes, I'll see lesser rate of Spectacle and um, probably just put the the simazine in there and no, no 24d and you can use something other than 24d but i probably won't i'll probably just go with those two uh, if you have a customer sign up midsummer if you've already run the earlier blanket weed control apps will you do a blanket out for weed lawn summer heap so what products would you use probably not elvin I, a couple things one you don't get that many people sign up in the summer two if they sign up in the summer i'm like i try to just talk to them and just like listen uh, we can fertilize your yard if you want to, and, and you know, but you're going to be fertilizing the weeds. We can do weed control, but it, you, you're going to have a really hard time knocking out all those weeds unless you're breaking out products that are not legal. Um, and, and if you, you said, hey, I'm going to go in there and spray it with, uh, let's say you sprayed it with Celsius and, and you want to knock out all kinds of stuff with that. I mean, it's just going to be expensive. Are you really making any money? So, I mean, I've tried to. I try to talk if it's, I mean, even if it's June, maybe I fertilize it. Okay. Maybe I go in there and spray uh, a quin chloride product, try to kill a bunch of crabgrass and go ahead and, you know, but if it's after June, it's July, I'm probably talking to maybe even in June. I mean, it's just me. I'm trying to talk them into, hey, yes, thank you for signing up with my company. Uh, let's get started in the fall. And, and I, and that's what I want them to do because that's when I want to take over and I don't want to have to try to clean all that stuff up. Um, but, you know, if I was going to, I guess I'd put, you know, Quinclorac in there, maybe 
Celsius or something. I don't know. Try to kill a bunch of stuff. But I think you're going to be battling crabgrass and just have all kind of problems. Now, that, that's if it's a Bermuda's law. And if it's, um, you know, if it if it's a centipede yard and it had just like a bunch of lespedes and stuff like that, I can go in there. Um, or St. Austin, you might go in there with the, with change up or a change up and on both, and you can knock out a bunch. So that would be a little bit different situation. I'm kind of picturing my mind of Bermuda Yards just covered in crabgrass. Elvin says, uh, warm season tired. All right. Uh, what should I be doing with my centipede lawn? Uh, you talking about right now? I mean – or again, I'm, I've kind of went over this in, in the fall. I'm using spectacle flow. You can use prodiamine uh, if you want to. Getting that pre emergent on there will greatly help it what it's going to look like next spring, keeping a lot of those cool season weeds out. So when you get a little bit late in the game, be fertilizing, in my opinion. Um, grass, warm season grass. I think he's asking about, you know, if you got somebody signed up. So I think I'll address that. Um, Triclopier equals Pathfinder, Remedy, Tailspins. He's given some of the products. Thank you, Michael. He's given some of the products that came in. We also said that other uh, product, Crossbow. But, yeah, that's for the brush killer. So I, I love this. You know, whenever I don't know the answer, you guys bail me out, and that's great. All right. What pre emergency you recommend for Bermuda, Bermuda and St. Augustine? I'm, I'm using uh, Spectacle in the fall. I'm using uh, Prodiamine in, early in the year. And uh, this next year, I'm actually going to use spectacle on in Barbuda yards probably again, like in May, to try to help with dove weed stuff. Here's my best comment we've had so far. I love this, and I just tell you what that means a lot. And this one is even better, and this third one says it all. Said what I've been trying to say the whole time. And there's another fourth one, a fifth one, a sixth one. And he made eight of them. All right, buddy. Thank you for that. And let me see. See, I didn't have to do this much, but there's some kind of button that makes people mute them. And something tells me he didn't do this just because he thought it was funny. The fact he did it eight times made me hit the uh, block you forever kind of button. So um, that's not picking on people for this speaking a different language. I've actually been in other countries before. It's a difficult thing. But that was that's ridiculous to post that eight times. Now I've lost my place, man. Here we go. All right, I'm. Um, all right, here we go. Oliver, do you see any problems mixing prodiamine with a post-emergent and a fungus treatment all together? Uh, I'm doing that for my home. No, I don't see any problems with that at all. As a matter of fact, it's probably what I would do. Mix them all together if you're going to do it. Do you know what dark green patches in Bermuda grass? Is it a fungus? Uh, could be that fungus that we all know of as your dog peeing in the yard. <laughs> you know, but I'm not sure. Could be other things, but a lot of times dark green patches spotty is dog urine. Glad to see you back in the lives, man. TLC Specialty Weed Control South Texas. Thanks, Caleb. Good to hear from you. And, yeah, I did take a break. While we were living out, not in my house. We did a big renovation on our house and been back in for a month, and it was just a lot of transition. But you know, how do you get stripes in the yard? I think we addressed that already. A lot to do with the grass type you're dealing with, cool season grass. I tried to stripe my – I overseeded mine one winter. Part of the reason was to see if I could stripe, and it did okay. But, yeah, I, need, I didn't have it thick enough. Have you tried to change up MSM combo? Does some serious damage on button weed. Yes, I have tried tried that. It works great. Like low rate of change up. I like eight ounces per acre and a quarter ounce of metzofuron, a third ounce of metzofuron. What I like is I can use that on centipede, St. Augustine, uh, Bermuda, Zoysia, and it's not just button weed. I mean, it knocks out lots of weed. So and, and relatively cheap. Uh, be careful spraying that when it's 95 degrees. But it is a, a great combo that you can use to knock out lots of weeds. Um, all right. Thoughts on Syncor on goosegrass? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about that uh, product. I, goosegrass, I mean, is it, to me, I, we, I have, and what a reason I got more goosegrass in my yard. Now, my, uh, you know, like, it likes compact soil. I've got full rakers. I got places in my yard just covered in goosegrass. I probably need to get out there and spray it. 
But I think, you know, clean chloride products, I think, work on goosegrass. Again, we, I don't hardly ever see it in lawns I deal with, so I'm probably not the best. And I think Dismiss NXT is supposed to be a, a pretty good goosegrass product as well. All right, Daniel, you are milking the comment there on the how to get stripes. I think we've answered that three times. All right, for North Carolina, when should I consider putting down pre emergent things? Um, Again, go by the weather, don't, not where you live. It, when, before you get those cool nights in the in the fall, so I mean, you see the temperatures going to drop down in the low fifties, uh, upper forties. You you need to have it down before then and already watered in. So whenever that is, I don't know. I imagine parts of North Carolina on the coast might be later, and parts up in the mountains might be earlier. Michael. One of my favorite comments so far, a $5 comment. Thank you for that, Michael. I really appreciate that. All right. German says, can you apply pre-emergent on a granulate form like barricade then apply liquid form like 2,4-D on Bermuda grass, Atlanta, Georgia? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can apply. It comes in granular or liquid version. I mean, I like me, I got a big tank, so I... I get liquid or this wettable powder and I just mix it all in there in the tank and spray it all at the same time. So I got 2,4-D and prodiamine spraying it all together. You know, it wouldn't make sense for me to spread the granular and then go back and spray the, the liquid 2,4-D. So uh, not to mention the liquid version or the wettable powders are cheaper. And again, it's just about combining products. So I would recommend liquid if you've got a if you've got um, the ability to spray that. All right, James, you tell Dustin, yeah, that's what I was, I was saying neighbors. I, it's, I was thinking neighbors like it's your neighbor, your next door neighbor, but it's John Neighbors class in Birmingham. That's what I was trying to think of. And I've actually got his card and contact information, but you could, Dustin, you could call the Birmingham uh, Botanical Gardens and ask to speak with John Neighbors or ask for his comment, contact and say, hey, I want to, take his prep class for the OTPS license. In your professional opinion, what's the fact that wetting is best to help control my customer's weeds better? I'm adding AMS. All right, so I'll tell you, I buy my stuff from Harold's. They sell me this non-ionic surfactant. That's what I use almost all the time. The methylated seed oil I've heard can make a huge difference um, when you're trying to kill crabgrass with concorite, but I've sprayed it on video with non-ionic surfactant. It works great, um, but I've heard also it can make a huge difference when you're using like tribute toll and things like that. And you're trying to knock out Dallas grass in the fall, uh, in winter, maybe the fall and spring. So um, that's you know my thoughts on that. Dustin, how does someone afford to start a, a new spray business, not just equipment, insurance, license, et cetera? Well, that's a good question, Dustin. I think a couple thoughts on that. You can start small if you want to and just get you a push spreader and a backpack sprayer and get out there and you're in business. Okay, so you're viewing granular, pro, uh, granular pre-emergence and in your backpacking yards. Um, that's not going to be a lot of fun for a while. So you're going to want to upgrade if you can. But, you know, I look at it like this. I started, I went and bought like a eleven dollars or $12,000 spray rig. And you think eleven or twelve thousand dollars? You know, well, I mean, I'm that rig is made hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it still works. I mean, it's still great. You know, so like I said, I'm not knocking lawn mowing grass because I've mowed grass a lot, and I like mowing grass, and I like lawn mowers. But you're going to spend a lot, you know, thousand dollars on a lawn mower, and it's going to wear out and have to be replaced. And yes, it makes you money, but this spray tank is going to make you a lot of money, probably way more. Than the lawnmower would. So, I mean, is there a startup cost? Of course there is. Um, but you look at it, it's like literally a spray rig. It's not that complicated. Mine runs off a little Honda engine. It's got a, a pump on it. And it's just a money-making machine. I mean, it's just like, the thing is great. I mean, so yeah, it's some cost, but what business is there not some cost to? I mean, unless you're going to be like a window cleaning business or something, you go buy a squeegee and some Windex. So, um, but, you, you know, you start with what you got. If you got to get started with push spreader and, and backpack spray, and you start with that. Have any recommendations for good herbicide or product spray weeds around ornamental plants and shrubs and bushes and garden beds without damage? them? So you can go like over the top of stuff with the products like Snapshot or Freehand. 
I used to do that as like a pre-emergent, and then I'd go spot treat with glyphosate. I, I started using SureGuard now and mixing it with the glyphosate. So, because I was like, I'm spreading this granular stuff out. And the big advantage of that is you can go over the top of your shrubs and all that. But I was still having to go back and spray glyphosate. And I thought, well, why don't I just mix the SureGuard in there with the glyphosate and just spray it? Now, you can't go over the top. You can't spray the bushes. You, you can just get close to them. But that's what I'm using, SureGuard and glyphosate. Uh, how can I hold my weed eater so I don't scalp the yard? You just got to practice on that, Daniel. You just got to have a steady hand and, and practice. Um, Austin, okay, here, uh, these are products. He, he, he mentioned Snapshot and Freehand, and I, I mentioned um, SureGuard is what I'm using. Austin, best one I've found is Ornamec or Fusilade. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, too. And they both mentioned that. Um, let's see. With the rampant infestation of army worms recently, would it be a good time to spray Roundup to kill off all the weeds they haven't eaten if they completely eaten in Bermuda Yard? I would say no on that. I would definitely say no because, it, you know, the chances are that even that Bermuda may look completely eaten and just brown and, and maybe, you know, get away with it. Chances are it probably still has some green tissue somewhere. And you go spray Roundup, you're going to most likely cause some damage to Bermuda. So I'm going to give that a big thumbs down. But I like the way you're thinking outside the box, but I'm going to caution you not to do that. How would you handle a large spurge and broadleaf issue in a Bermuda line right now? Just signed up, actually, with daytime temps over 90 Celsius, certainly expensive, like you said. I would just talk to a man. i say, listen, it, you know, fall's coming. I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't want to touch it at all. I say let's let's start with this fall application. These weeds you got, the vast majority of them are going to die um, when the cold weather gets here. So I I would not go in there and try to knock out a bunch of weeds right now. I would just say hey, let's start in the fall. Now, don't worry about you missing one chance to make sixty bucks on their lawn. And we're just starting to fall and you can get on the program you want to do. The limit on pre-emergence is related to the approvals for the product, but you don't want to go over too much because it inhibits root growth, so it may be difficult to fill some spots. Yep, somebody asked earlier about the annual limits on herbicides, and uh, Oliver's responding to that. Thank you, Oliver. All right, okay, Elvin's question that you answered kind of covered my question as well. Okay, Alexander, Simazine label confused me. It says use after October 1. It also says use on dormant Bermuda. My grass is still green in November here in Montgomery, so I need to wait until it goes dormant. Um, maybe I need to reread the Simazine label, Alexander, but I have been spraying the Simazine. Like I said, I'm planning to be spraying it uh, day after Labor Day, you know, so I probably need to check the label on that. Um, it, it may be, I, again, I had to, to read it. It may, it may be some caution on there that if it's, uh, if you use it and the grass is is green, then it you know possibly cause a little damage to the turf or something like that. I'm not I'm not sure. So, but I've used it and haven't seemed to have any problems with. It. Um, thanks, Jason. Uh, thank you for the answer from fellow Alabamian. Greetings from Florence. Oh, I got a friend in Florence, and I heard the army worms are terrible up there. Um, Really bad. So, yeah, you probably did get smoked pretty – it probably did eat all your life. Still wasn't spray it around up, though. Has it been difficult for you to scale into multiple crews? What has your experience been like training employees, et cetera? Uh, yes, it has been a little bit difficult, but I think some of that is – I could have done it if I wanted to. Some of it's just my personality, and I didn't want to. So I had a couple of trucks – going um, up until last year and had somebody helping and I downsized on purpose. Some of it was so I could focus on YouTube. Some of it uh, had kind of more business than I could do by myself. Not really enough for somebody full time, the second truck. So it was kind of like I wasn't getting full use out of my truck. And it was just, I don't, and, and some of it, I just probably a little bit of a micromanager and I didn't want to give up stuff. So anyway, um, Getting the business is is was not really a problem. I think I could have done that, um, but just you know wanting to grow and dealing with the headaches and all that, I, I kind of chose not to. And I, so I sold off a good bit of my customers, and 
uh, doing the YouTube thing and trying to stay solo at the moment. Hey, Jason, I recently moved to a new house and I thought it was St. Augustine. It's getting overwhelmed by something. Any advice on how to get rid of it? I've been pulling that stuff for out forever. I would have to Google that weed to even know what it looked like. I'm sorry. So if somebody, uh, if somebody knows what this weed is, jungle rice. I mean, that's what it's spelled, jungle rice. Somebody knows how to get rid of that. Um, please help us out here. Syncor is not labeled for residential turf. So somebody was um, throwing that out as an answer to a question. I forget the question, but James says Syncor is not labeled for residential turf. And I believe him. Hey, man, quick question. Is it really necessary to go over the top of the edge after you've done? Is it really necessary to go over on top of the edge after you've done it, feel like you chew it up, take some more length and takes the crisp line away. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. So I'm thinking if he's talking about like, maybe if I edge around a tree ring or something, it, I, you know, I sometimes I'll go around and edge, you know, you take my trimmer and just level it out because the mower does not, um, I'm sorry, I don't really understand the question. But, yeah, I, I do, after I edge with a trimmer, I'll go around it with the trimmer again and kind of level it out because the mower doesn't quite get all the way over there and it leaves a little gap. Got about 10 minutes left on the program tonight. In North Carolina, I have some weeds. Should I spot spray the crabgrass and spurge or just let the winter kill? I would let the winter kill it if it was me. For Dustin, I started with a couple of backpacks and a two 16-gallon tanks on a four-way. They're already on a four-way mode and saved it for a licensed LC insurance building every day. Charles is giving some hope. Someone's asking how can I get started in weed control. I think it's a great answer, Charles. Thank you for that. Howdy from Southern California. Anybody in chat or Jason, what are your thoughts on using groundskeeper to rake? Is that... I don't know what that is. I, I, I'm familiar, I've heard of groundskeeper software, but the groundskeeper two rake, I do not know what that is. I'm sorry. Pedro Martinez used to be a famous baseball player, but I'm assuming somebody different. Do you love what you do? I, that's a great question, Pedro. I think uh, I enjoy my job probably mo more than most people enjoy theirs. I'll say that. It, it's a fit for me. Um, I've had a couple weeks off lately, and I, I have enjoyed that greatly. So sometimes, like anything, get a little burnout. I think you need to, if you're in a lot of business, I think it's very important to schedule time off and make sure it's not all consuming. And that's the same thing with me, like doing YouTube stuff, doing this. Like I took a few weeks. Off. Like, do I want to do this every Monday night for the rest of my life? Not really, but I kind of enjoy it, you know. But it's like I don't necessarily have to do it all the time, you know. Just take breaks. It, it's it is what it is. It's a great. I, I like what I do for a job, um, but it's not everything that makes up who I am as a person. So I, I schedule breaks. How do you get rid of weeds out of monkey grass? Well. You know, I, I'll say this. It's hard to kill monkey grass, so you probably use some stuff to spray the weeds with that won't kill the monkey grass. Now that, you know, check the label. That may be off-label if, if you do that, but it's hard to kill monkey grass. <laughs> I'll say other than that, I mean, you may have to pull them or something. I, sometimes, I've seen people. I had one the other day, and the, this guy's yard was just covered in monkey grass, but it had weeds all grown. I mean, some of it's just manual labor. I, to me, he went crazy on the monkey grass and it hadn't maintained it and it kind of taken over. I had to cut them to the ground off season, start over to no avail. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard. I, I don't know. It's hard when you get in a situation like that, you, the weeds are taken over and they're all in something. You, you can't like go in there and spray Roundup. I mean, you know, I'm not saying it would necessarily kill the monkey grass, but it's not, it's not great. Uh, have you looked into target six at a minimal rate and have had decent response after two act, two weeks need spot tree here with the uh, so far so charles is recommending target six which is the msma which is the illegal product but yeah it will definitely uh clean up a bermuda yard and in you know great it's just not legal james says jungle rice is similar to barnyard grass so here's your answer who was asked about the jungle rice earlier a warm season annual grass tough to get with a post-emergent start with prodiamine and see if you can reduce it year after year 
I would have to see a picture of jungle rice to see if I recognize it. Jungle grass equals barnyard grass. So, yeah, he's saying jungle rice. Some people say jungle rice, but similar to barnyard grass. Uh, James says there is a slight difference between the two. Okay, well, they're close enough. Pedro says, thanks for answering. Oliver says, thanks. Uh, it's the FS94 good. I, I've heard people say that the steel FS94 trimmer is great, and I've heard other people say they don't like it. I, I don't know. Uh, but I've heard mixed reviews on it. I always put it that way. It seemed like the 91 and maybe the 90 and the 91 are more popular. I just bought it. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. Um, Dustin, appreciate your time. No problem. I agree with James. pro will help with the jungle rice. Can y'all believe it? 55 minutes and we ran out of questions. Um, so we got just a few minutes left if anybody wants a final thought here. But the conversation has been good. Um, ben says he likes the 9-4 so far. Jason says, I know you mentioned adding another round of your program. Are you current, currently adding a 5-0-60 mix to your burnt Bermuda lawn? No, I'm not. Uh, my extra round I'm planning to go to 7-8. to eight applications next year i want to add uh spectacle in may and early june to help with dove weed and also just to help with um kalinga chamber bitters spurge those kind of weeds that just got killed by this year i want to see if i can um, do that so austin says he lied he thought he had done with his questions but he's got them Came with them. So I have three kids and two dogs constantly playing out in the yard. Is there a herbicide that even Jason would not uh, would not spray knowing this? MSMA. Uh, you just, I'm going to ask you just refer you to the labels on that, Austin. You got to check the labels and follow that according to precautions. Thank y'all. I look for Prodiamine. Prodiamine is a very inexpensive pre emergent to make a huge difference in your lawn. Preparing for the storm, I wonder how it'll affect the seeding. I hope you stay safe through the storm. Can you do a video of the program for St. Augustine grass, Oliver? I uh, can't remember if you could go, you could YouTube on YouTube search the Lawn Care Life St. Augustine grass. I don't know if I've done anything like that or not, um, but, or even Lawn Care Life centipede grass, see what comes up because it would be very similar. Is Walmart ethanol free gas good for steel trimmers? Well, they say the ethanol is what eats up the carburetor. So I would say still uh, ethanol-free gas would be better. I uh, do run that typically in my handheld equipment. Um, so I think it's a, a good idea. Thank you. Be safe. Awesome channel. I appreciate it. Thank you for your questions tonight. They were great. Um, let's see. Ben Fields, I've been using non-ethanol gas from Murphy for two years. No issues. The other thing I say in my handheld equipment, I use this Opti 2 mix. Um, that's the, the oil I put in there. And it supposedly has fuel stabilizer in it to help uh, reduce the effects of the ethanol. So, and I think that also can make a difference. Ben Fields agree with Jason. Mixed reviews on the FS94. I haven't used one, but I've got the 90, the 100, and the uh, KM130 for years. Great machines. If you don't mind adjusting valves once in a while. Yeah, that's the whole thing on the steels is the whole adjusting valves. I don't, I'm no mechanic. I, I don't think it's something necessarily hard, but, um, Hey bro, what software do you use for your life? I am using StreamYard is the name of the software. It does, uh, have a little bit of a cost to it, but it's, it's great. Hey, just valves. I'm sure somebody maybe has done a YouTube video on it. I don't know how, um, the 94 is a true two-stroke. Two the others I mentioned are four mix engines, which are a bit different. So if the 94 is a two-stroke, I wonder if it has the valves or not. It may not. I'm not sure. Trent says, hey, from Mississippi, really enjoy the channel. I hope you're in northern Mississippi and not southern Mississippi because you're probably getting bombarded with rain. Grass turning brown, it seems soil is black, dark green, slimy algae. I don't know about that algae. I mean, you probably have some drainage issues. Um, grass turning brown could just be time of year. Uh, somebody mowed it too low, could be eating it with army worms. FS94 is my preferred trimmer, been used for two years, preferred over my 525L. I got the 525LS and I love that. Um, you anyway, know, I'm just hustling on the trimmers, but I don't have anything against steel. With a uh, growth regulator suppressed seed head on Dallas, I don't think so. Probably not. 
Uh, I, I don't know. I, it doesn't work too good on weeds. You can actually find on YouTube many videos fairly easy to do so how, on how to adjust valves. So go to adjust how to adjust valves on steel trimmer. And um, also, you are the goat when it comes to weeds. I don't, I don't know about that, but I'm glad I'm able to help a lot of people. Should I buy a steel BR350? I'll say this. I kind of like the mid-size blowers. I, I'm a Red Max guy when it comes to blowers. Um, I've had the, the, I don't think I ever had the 8,000 or 8,500, like the big, big Red Max. I had the 7,000, 7, 7,500, 6,500, 5,500. Um, and I kind of like that 5,500. Unless you're out there huffing and puffing and trying to blow off Walmart's parking lot or something. To me, the mid ones are fine for most just residential lawns. Wouldn't be a good time to put out juniper on a steep bank at the back of my yard, central Alabama. You can do it anytime, but I do lie my plant nicely in the wintertime. Uh, if you do it now, you, you can do it. You just got to keep it watered. Um, if you'll wait till like November and probably plant it, let it get established over the winter, and it'll be uh, hopefully good to go next summer. Appreciate the live. Jason, thanks for the great information. Take care. We're going to end it on that. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the great conversation, the great questions. We're going to reschedule with our XMark friends, talk about XMark equipment, try to keep um, pounding out some great episodes, get some good guests on here. But you guys make the show often with your good questions. We wrapped up an hour and one minute. Enjoyed it. If you want resources, they're at And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. See ya.